Hello, Bibliotes. Uh, today I wanted to talk about uh, Bulb Language, um, a chapter in her book about uh, dualism and the mastery of nature, um, which is a chapter that goes, it's all about um, the problem with uh, dualism and why um, oppositional thinking uh, has sort of like led to, to ecological disaster, among other things. Uh, but just all sorts of discrimination, from racial discrimination to gender discrimination in general, uh, kind of like having dualism as the bad guy. And uh, her answer to that is um, what seems to me to be like a multiplicity. I haven't read her whole book, so I um, I might be wrong about that. I don't want to make this pretty much potentially ranty video uh, about Plumwood uh, as much as I want to make it about... Um, philosophy about my problem with um, my number one problem with philosophy which is the same problem that um, Hannah Arendt uh, had with philosopher and it's not really with philosophy as much as it is with um, philosophers with philosophers since the German is, uh, appropriated uh, the practice of philosophy and made it extremely academic and extremely bureaucratic and extremely strange from the world and extremely um, solipsistic as well in some ways and then kind of like trying to, re to, to solve a problem that they generated themselves uh, or that's the way I see it anyways. Um, in response to Plumwood is like, yeah, sure, uh, dualism exists, right? We have uh, different uh, forms of oppositional thinking, uh, blue and red, black and white, uh, hot and cold, um, um, human and beast, uh, human and animal, uh, man and woman. Those are forms of oppositional thinking that we've sort of like generalized in our society. Um, individuality and universality. Um, or any kind, really, up and down, uh, the way this, f the the, w the way in which this interrelation uh, of um, of concepts works is uh, by uh, collision, right? And then you're in one, either in one side or on the other. In this unilaterality, uh, in this uh, not unilaterality, but this um, this collision always ends up with one up and down, one uh, black and white, one right and wrong. And I'm, I'm, this is not a video about relativism, although an answer to dualism, to Hegel's dualism, was postmodernity, which is extremely relativist. Uh, but it's more about, um, well, yeah, for, first, um, that is true, uh, multiplicity exists, although it doesn't really escape the, the fact that within multiplicity you can still find multiplicity as a combination of multiple dualities. Um, meaning, you know, yeah, there's more than black and white, there's a whole range of colors, but uh, you could still divide every single uh, pair of colors into different uh, dualities. Um, or you could just look at the whole thing and, and the, this is just a, all a unity, everything is the same, uh, monism, right? Um, doesn't really say anything to me. If, if what we're trying to solve here is oppositional thinking, right? Which, to, I mean, the problem I see is not so much dualism itself as... Um, the, unilater the unilaterality of dualism. Dualism hasn't happened, you know, like, it's not, for example, um, during the colonial times that Europe was uh, doing Orientalism and the Orient was doing uh, Westernalism or Occidentalism, right? It doesn't happen, it's, it's not balanced, it's unilateral. Is that dualism already from, um, from, from only one perspective when it comes to a cultural or, um, or a social sense? Um, meaning... Um, the way in which um, certain minorities or certain or immigrants in a certain uh, uh, on a different country difference in the way in which difference is um, framed is not as an uh, is not as an equal other in the sense of like we are both others that are sort of like understanding each other's uh, each other as um, as as op as opposed uh, forces as could happen between like. Uh, Germany and England um, that in some way, you know, is, uh, within within the West, uh, different countries, different cultures more often look at each other as sort of like difference rather than otherness. But um, when we look at what we cannot understand um, through the different um, tools of um, assimilation, um, what we do is we simplify them, we cut them down in piece, into pieces to a um, more uh, understandable um, um, st stereotype, and then and then that is the other that we've created. Now you are this thing, right? 
and uh, what we do is we determine its identity but also it's uh, the range of its existence like that uh, meaning if i can only understand the world if, if i want to understand the world right and everything that is not in it for, for example nature which is what concerns me more um and my the 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 width and 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 depth of my capacity to understand anything is this big but nature goes way beyond this, then I'd have to um, dissect nature and, and um, geometrically make it uh, fit this lens that I have created, these, uh, these boundaries, this fence that I have created for, for my understanding of it to match the reality of it, um, which um, means um, in genocide, it means, uh, you know, of course, uh, I'm not here again to talk about Adorno and about how, uh, you know, uh, in some ways uh, the, the, um, the attempt to assimilate the non-identical, the non-identical that which cannot be identified, that which is uh, far too complex or far too other for us to, to compartmentalize in one of these sort of like uh, conceptual frameworks. Uh, is the seat of many genocides. Um, I'm here just to talk about how senseless, how like useless this whole uh, thinking is. It's like, and that's why I said I agree with uh, Hannah Arendt. It's, it's not so much that um, this is not true, that we have a, a opposed thinking that um because of probably our um mm, uh, not our but like the west's uh, hegemony in every single sense kind of like everything is defined through it and it determines the capacity to exist of everything else uh, half of the world is either poor or at war because of um four countries that are sort of like the the eye the 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 only um, sort of like the the eye that um, determines again the the rules of the game of of existence right but also we as he, as humans as a species uh, determine the the, lim the limitations of of the, of the rest of the world they determine how every how how being can be done and how being cannot be done and what is acceptable and what is not acceptable um but i don't know i i i went for a run yesterday and i saw a baby deer next to a road uh, behind a tree and uh, it had been struck by a car it was not very big small enough that i could have taken it and put it back into the park that was next to the road but the fence was pretty high and the deer was not so badly wounded that it wouldn't have escaped from me um so I did all the right things, which is to say nothing. I called uh, the park and they said, oh, if it's outside of the park, it's not our jurisdiction. You need to call the RMPCA or something like that. So I searched for this organization and I called them and they were like, um, uh, what is it? And they were like, okay, but uh, if it's not uh, in the park or in the road, then no, actually the first time I called, I didn't even get to speak with a human. I pressed all the right options and they were like, uh, we don't and and the the machine answered that um, it's n that no one cares basically that I need to contact uh, someone else. So I contacted I contacted the local veterinary I think first and um, that uh, told me that they don't have the um, uh, the um, the authority to stop traffic or or to just go get a deer that that is uh, part of the local wildlife. Um, association or something like that so i called at the local wildlife and they told me to call back call back to the rmpca and by press option number three so that i get to speak to a human and they would tell me exactly what i need to do or what they will do uh, so i did that and i got to speak finally with uh, the corresponding authorities um, when it comes to local wildlife uh, wildlife which is kind of a a joke to say wildlife anymore especially i mean especially in england in europe but in any western civilized uh, part of um, what we call so, um, <laughs> uh, yeah uh, the world nowadays um, 
So yeah, I call them uh, number three. Uh, hello, hello. Uh, I tell them where the deer is. You know, it's hidden behind a tree in the walk path that is just next to the road, trapped between basically the road and the fence that doesn't allow it uh, to get back into the... Allow her. It's, it was a she. Uh, I'll allow her to, to get um, back into the park. Now, I mean, it's not like... So when I see an animal astray in a place like this, especially a deer in England, it's not like... I don't, I'm not really seeing an animal. I'm seeing a trophy. I'm seeing, you know, it's just going back into the park so that, you know, in a certain amount of time, uh, when the season is up, uh, someone can come and shoot her uh, rather than a car um, uh, striking her because somehow one thing is acceptable and the other one is not. But um, either way, I called them and they were like, okay, uh, is she badly wounded? And I was like, is she is wounded? I don't know if she is badly wounded. I'm not a veterinary. And they were like, okay, but is she... Uh, can she walk? And I was like, yeah. I mean, like, I tried to approach her because my first reaction was to just... Uh, I I grew up in an animal shelter. Um, I have <laughs> de dealt with many kinds of animals that most people doesn't even come across, uh, both uh, in my childhood but also in my life in general. And every time I see an animal that needs my help, I try to give their help. And I know deers are very unpredictable, especially in the way they move. So I tried to approach her. The moment I saw that she moved away from me, I decided not to continue going because very easily she could jump into the road and then uh, she would be stuck by the car. If we were anywhere else, I would have tried to deal with by myself, uh, deal with her by myself, but um, not in that situation. So I, uh, I was like, yeah, it came off, and they were okay. What is she exactly? And I told them. So she is like literally two, mit two meters away from the road where the cars are passing, and uh, just literally between a tree and the fence that is not allowing her to to get back in the park where I guess uh, that she's coming from that park because it looks like a fairly generous woodland. Uh, and they were like, okay, if she is neither in the tra uh, st stopping traffic or in the park, then it's no one's uh, jurisdiction. So you need to wait until she um, goes back in the park and then call the park or the, um, or the local wildlife uh, so that they can treat her wounds. Or um, if she jumps into the traffic, then you need to call roadkill or or the police so that they can shoot her. Um, so I told this person to fuck off, uh, kindly, to fuck off. And I... I mean, it's not like I'm surprised. It's not like... These things doesn't don't surprise me anymore. I I know how this I know how the world works. Uh, I I don't I don't see how someone can know that this is a reality that we just like fucking uh, run over a fucking deer that is now uh, with uh, bleeding from the leg and in between uh, the road that we've uh, built on what used to be their um, habitat and the park that we've created in order for her to run around until she's old enough for her to be shot. Um, I don't know how we can look at that and see, and, and me calling out like literally every single number, every like everyone who could be kind of qualified or at least legally uh, allowed to do anything about it. And, um, and, and, and receive that kind of response and then tell me that uh, we deserve to exist as a species. I, I I don't think it's even fucking misanthropic in, to say that anymore. I, I don't consider myself a misanthrope. I love uh, certain individual humans, but when something like this comes, I know for a fact that if I had bad the button to press the end of, of this beep, biped hegemony that we've um, achieved, I would immediately. Um, I, I don't think that there has ever been a more <sighs> contagious... Uh, I don't think that there has ever been a worse species than ours in, in the planet. And hopefully there will never be one. But if there were, I hope they have more power than us so that at least uh, we get to learn about it. Um, yeah, I, I thought I was going to end up screaming in this video or anything, but honestly, I did a lot of that uh, yesterday. I, I couldn't do anything with the deer because 
um, deers are very fast, but also many many animals are many many animals are um, predictable in the way they move. Uh, you you can see where they're gonna run. You can see how far and how fast they're gonna jump. Uh, you can see if they are gonna let you touch them or take them. If I could have grabbed her, I could have just um, uh, throw her over the fence at least, or carry her to the entrance or something like that. I don't know how she got out. I think it's because every time the the park people uh, comes into the park, uh, they open the door and they leave the door open for a while and then they close the door. And probably in that interval, uh, the deer got out. But the point is that I just couldn't grab her. I just couldn't um, uh, help someone in need. And I say someone because I don't see any difference between that and a fucking child with a broken leg next to the road. So I don't understand uh, why um, why she didn't get any help. Um, Which means that I just had to leave. It means that I just... Okay, there's... Um, I guess it's up to you, right? Uh, what I did is I, I broke the fence. I, so I could not get close enough to her, although she allowed me to be like five meters away from her. Um, I could not grab her or anything. What I did is I broke the fence uh, in a space so that she could get back in. Because no animal is stupid. They know that what the road is. And they know uh, it's a it's a hazard. If they end up outside of the park, it's by mistake or because they believe that there is something. The moment any animal sees what's outside of the park, which is fucking hell, it's just fucking uh, metallic machines roaring and and uh, excreting smoke as they pass by, destroying everything on their way. Um, then they get back into the park. So I'm not I'm not afraid or concerned about the having broken the fence. Although I'll probably go back. Or report it, say, I saw the, ro the broken fence so that someone fix it. Uh, but I broke the fence um, far enough from, from, from her so that she would um, be able to see it and, and get back in, but not so close that it would scare her and she would jump into the traffic. And, and, uh, and then I had to leave. That's it. I did nothing. I, I did absolutely nothing. I just called a few people and heard a few possible solutions. Everyone tried to... I felt, once again, trapped in fucking being John Malkovich um, for a while, and then I continued with my day. And that's it. Um, so I just... F I mean, like, I don't even know what this video is going. I don't know. I... I it would have been a very different video if I would have made it yesterday. That's why I chose to, to wait, because... Um, I don't know that swearing and and uh, and getting very angry is um, is something that is welcome in YouTube, but um, and also again I am not surprised. I know the world I live in and I know how things work. So I, it's not like you know. It's, it's it's not like that doesn't happen by billions in in many different. Uh, places that are pretty much regulated and exist in order for that to happen, such as slaughterhouses. Uh, so it's not, it's, yeah, it's, it's, um, and it's not something that I ignore like most people does, that they just like ignore the amount of cruelty and suffering that we inject into the world by every second. I am very aware of every single one of those. At least I'm aware of uh, my uh, individual impact uh, when it comes to, to that. Um, so when something like that happens, it doesn't surprise me. It just bothers me because I, when I, when I, the time I spend in civilization, the time I spend around other people in places where there are more buildings and trees, is always, um, is always first of all instrumental for something that I need or want. In this case, it's just my, this is sort of like in the academic arch of my life and also I just needed to make some money in the UK before uh, continuing to travel and everything and start other projects <sighs> but um, it's also like um, because I have the capacity to kind of suspend that if I am thinking about that every single day I would go fucking crazy or I would start a mass shooting um, and I don't want to do either of them because I value my life. And I mean, I don't hate people individually. I just hate the way we have structured our society. That so, so that uh, immense uh, suffering is good and is, and is welcome and is okay. So in so far as it happens to anyone who's 
far enough from what you consider your uh, inner circle that it's uh, that you cannot relate to it, right? And so as long as what's happening is happening to the other, whether it's in Palestine or whether it's in a park and it's an animal from a different species, it's fine, right? It doesn't matter. I also no longer believe in the possibility of uh, political conciliation or social change of any kind, uh, so I don't have any... Um, I don't have any overarching project or solution. I don't. I don't think that that can be done. I think we've uh, um, used and expired all our chances to change this. So now it's just I'm 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 kindly waiting for extinction. I'm I'm trying to have uh, fun with without participating in this uh, ecological massacre that we are doing um, as much as I can. But uh, I'm I'm just trying to whenever the world burns I'm, I'm trying to live in a way that i can look back and say i did not add any fuel to the fire i the world is burning i might not have stopped it because i just it's way beyond my capacity but i did not participate in in the incendiary actions that preceded it all I did was to try to enjoy the time that I was given by whatever kind of providence uh, in this planet. And uh, yes, maybe help my immediate relatives, but only that which I can do. You know, I know what are the limits of what I can do and what I cannot do. I cannot, um, uh, I cannot bring two cars, stop the traffic. Uh, <laughs> and catch the deer and put it put her back into the park and then maybe uh, remove the road and grow a forest and um, get rid of like 99 percent of uh, infrastructures that we have created uh, that don't really make sense and don't really do anything other than uh, sicken us uh, more so yeah i mean uh, i guess this, i guess this this was not as much of a rant as i thought it was gonna be um it's more a series of thoughts on dualism and the mastery of nature from Val Plumwood and, uh, and, and just an anecdote about uh, yesterday, a day like any other day, um, incredibly uneventful probably for the RSPCA and the wildlife department and all the local authorities that are uh, in charge of um, safekeeping that wildlife. Um, I guess that's all I had to say for today. I um, Let me know what you think about dualism and the marginality of nature. And yeah, I'll see you on the other side. Thank you, Bogdouf. <laughs>